Hey guys, this is Ed, Paul, and Anna of Current Brand Media, and we are here to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. Sportsball is a great subscription service geared towards minor league baseball fans. Each box features a different minor league team. You get a box every three months with minor league baseball gear, including different styles of hats like Ed's favorite, the dad hat. The cost is less than $12 a month. Proceeds from each box goes to More Than Baseball, the only nonprofit dedicated to the well-being of minor league baseball players. We all know that Parents' Days are coming up this summer, so if you've got a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa who are particularly difficult to buy for, but you know they're baseball fans, this is the answer, guys. Meet your new favorite team at sportsballbox.com. Is there anybody there? <laughs> You know, we, it's funny, I, yesterday I went to three different combines, two of them were ours, one of them was a different one, um, started at 8 a.m., the last one ended at 11 p.m., and I'm like, hey, this is, this is my, this is my, this is my day as general manager today, and then, you know. What's up, Dad Ed crew? Ed here, and on this episode, I give you guys Matt Van Beskoten. He is the general manager of Minneapolis City SC, soccer club in the USL League. Uh, we talked about the grassroots movements they have going on, right? They want to keep it very local, but yet want to increase the popularity of the sport and their team nationwide. So you guys got to take a good listen to this because this was a lot of fun. And then, listen, we also talked about the Mighty Ducks. That's right. Ducks fly together. So, guys, without further ado, I'll give you the episode. All right. Well, I want to welcome you guys to yet another episode of the Dad Hack Chronicles. Uh, you guys know me by this by now. My name is Ed. And with me, guys, today, I have the general manager of Minneapolis City Soccer Club, Matt Van Ben Scoten. I got it right. I got it right. Yes. You nailed it, man. Hold on. <laughs> How you doing, Matt? I'm doing well, Ed. How are you doing? Oh, it's a beautiful day. You know, we were just talking offline of how, like, you know, we've been trying to get, you know, together for an interview for, and, you know, something happened. I got COVID. You got sick. You know, it's just the holidays and everything just got crazy. Exactly. No, I'm I'm excited we can finally connect. And uh, yeah, it only it only took us two months. So <laughs> Exactly. Only took two months to get this done. But hey, whatever. Who's counting, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, the first thing that I want to... Um, to ask you is obviously, you know, this is a, uh, soccer episode. So I want to get to know your, you know, how'd you become a fan of the sport, right? Like, I mean, everybody has their own sport that they love. Uh, how'd you grow up becoming a fan of, um, of, uh, of soccer? Yeah. So I, so I obviously live here in Minnesota, uh, mm -hmm. born, raised, never moved. You know, I, I've, I've shoveled my driveway 15 times this week and that's not an exaggeration. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm still here, but I am. And this is, this is where I reside. So naturally being, being a Minnesota kid, I actually grew up uh, being a really big hockey fan. That's nice. the thing I grew up on. I loved it. So I'm a big hockey fan. Um, Are you a Wilds fan? I am. I am. I'm a, I'm a North stars fan. I'm yep. not a Dallas stars fan. Norm green sucks for all of you. If you know, you know, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, old school, but yeah, no, I'm definitely a wild fan. It's, it's good to finally actually have, well, I mean, they've been here for 20 years now, but it's good to yep. have actual real hockey back. So yeah. So I grew up a hockey kid. That was, that's what I love to do, but I'm also the oldest of four boys. And the, the issue with hockey and, and now you could probably say the same thing about, soccer and probably all youth sports in some context was it, by the time I got to be 10 it was just way too much it was five to seven nights a week for nine months and my parents were like listen we're not doing this anymore go find something else to do I was like all right so all right I sure. yeah I was like all right, all right I guess you know so I got I, I played all the other sports but for whatever reason soccer was the one that stuck and you know I started watching Thierry Henry and Dennis Bergkamp and the Invincibles and Arsenal and they won a lot of games. So I was like, all right, like there's there's something to it. So it it wasn't it wasn't even my choice, I don't think. I think it was just out of necessity and my parents, you know, trying to have a fairly balanced life with four boys, which is never possible. But uh, 
yeah, it's, uh, it just kind of came to be. And, you know, now, now here I am at 37 and then I do it for a living. So it's pretty, pretty sweet. That is pretty cool because I, you know, I was looking at your, uh, your your page or your LinkedIn page, and you're also the junior boys director of Minnesota Thunder Academy, general manager of the team, and then you know, uh, you got your your hands full, my man. <laughs> it's it's a lot, man. Um, but I love it, and it's you know, I was, I was literally talking to another coach the other day about this. Like, I don't think anybody, most people probably don't grow up to be say, you know, I want to be a soccer coach, or you know, everybody grows up, I want to be a professional player, and that's always the goal, but for those of us who do get to do it for a living, it's, it, it's a little bit crazy because you give up a lot of nights and weekends and, you know, but there's really never a day that you don't enjoy. I mean, unless you lose and then that's, you know, not as ideal, but it's, it's great, man. And so, you know, the thing with coaching is you, you, it's hard to do one thing in coaching or soccer yeah. full time. So you kind of got to piece it together. And I'm, I'm just really lucky because I get to do it and work with, you know, the best amateur players here in Minnesota. And then I get to, you know, go and work with nine-year-old boys. That play <laughs> and have some fun half the time. Right. Right. So it's, it's, and it's a good balance because, you know, some days you're like, you know, it just depends like who's, who's throwing the temper tantrum. Is it the nine-year-old or is it the, 20 well, is it the, just, the, the adult? <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So having a good balance has been key to longevity for, my Sammy, that's for sure. That's right, because you guys here also, and I forgot to mention that you're also the head coach of Minnesota. I mean, Minneapolis, I'm well, sorry. Yeah, so actually I was. Um, I'm actually taking a step back now just so I can actually spend more time with my kids and family. I get uh, it. They are, they are important. So, yeah, it just it kind of worked out where our last GM, yep. he, he kind of got more, a more full-time job. He and his wife are having a baby, and so there's this opportunity for me to – stay involved in Minneapolis city, which is very near and dear to my heart, but also just kind of get a little bit more balance in terms of my life where I don't have to be on the field all the time and be gone it's all the time. So it work life out. balance, my friend, I understand that very you well. Got it. It, exactly. You know, listen, I, it, our family supports us and everything and everything that we do, but at the same time, you want to be able to spend time with your kids. You know, I got a four-year-old daughter, right? So you got to, and your wife, you know, you got to, got to balance that out. So I understand that very well. hundred percent. So you step, you know, you, you, you stepped into that role now, you know, what is it about that role that just like, you know, makes it different for you? Like, you know, I, obviously you got to love doing what you do in order for you to continue doing this. Yeah. It's a great question. And, you know, I, I do love coaching. I love being a part of that. I think what this new position really allows me to do is still be involved in the coaching side, the playing side, which, mm -hmm. which is awesome, but really to, I think, be more involved in all the different facets of the club. Um, for anybody who's ever been in and around lower level soccer or lower level, anything for that matter, it's, it's a lot of, you know, Hey, where's, where's the nearest fire? How do we put it out? And, you know, <laughs> what's going to come up today. So I think to be able to kind of move more into just bigger picture, strategic planning and trying to build out the future for three to five years is, is really important because, you know, I city in particular is, is really built on on passionate people and it's not just myself but that's really been the special thing that has made the club what it is and so you, you kind of got to be around it to understand like what the needs are what the nuances are and so when adam our, our former general manager stepped back mm -hmm. it was really critical to make sure that we found somebody who who understand kind of what the ethos of the club is understood the landscape and and really you know had an idea of like you know who we are where we've been and how do we try to go forward? So, you know, we, it's funny. I, yesterday I went to three different combines. Two of them were ours. One of them was a different one. Um, started at 8 a.m. The last one ended at 11 p.m. And I'm like, hey, this is, this is my, this is my, this is my day as general manager today. And then, you know, today I've been in some USL meetings, been talking to our staff, trying to, you know, figure out what players are going to do. And so, you know, the cool thing with this role is like, it changes all the time, which is great. Like it's not, monotonous you're doing the same thing over and over it's you know there's a lot of stuff to do and it changes and, and again variety has been great in that regard you know let, let me let's talk about this because you guys just now stepped into with the usl this year correct 
Correct. Yeah. So this last summer, it's actually last summer, 2022, this yep. sorry, last year, that was our first year in USL too. And we had been in the NPSL for mm-hmm. four years prior to that, five yep. years, four years. And, you know, NPSL was great. It was local, but as we kind of kept growing, we're like, you know, we, we looked at what USL was doing and said, you know, this looks like something that would really challenge us. And we're a club that we want to take on challenges. Mm-hmm. And, and even if that means we fail, and, and, and I would say last year was a really good example of that because we actually, we kept a team in NPSL. So we had a USL team an NPSL team and a UPSL team. So we had three teams in three different leagues and for, uh, you know, as a, as a club that's kind of held together by scotch tape and bubble gum, we just found out, well, ah, we're, we, we probably bit off a little bit more than we could Too do. much. And we learn from it and that, and that's okay. And it's, it's what will help shape us going forward. But uh, yeah, we're, we're always up for the challenge and, and USL was last year was great. You know, we record wise would have liked to be a lot better for sure, yeah. but you know, it, it was it was really eye opening to and a really good experience because anytime you step into a conference that has the defending national champions and Des Moines Menace, who you know they've been around forever and they're the gold standard at USL too, it's like all right, we're gonna find out really quick. Like, are we up to par? And you know, we we didn't win. We played them three times, once in the Open Cup, but you know, I we I felt like we played them competitively, and so it's like you know they're obviously better. Hopefully we get to that point at some, some day, but at least like we're not far off. And I think that was what was really encouraging for us last year was like, yeah, we'd love to do better from a competitive side, but we've learned a lot. And now it's like, all right, here's how we can be better going forward. That's awesome. I love that. Just because USL two is very competitive league. Like you said, it's just, you know, right. You, you guys are growing and you're, you're probably right. Like you bit off a little bit too much. And I was like, all right, let's just concentrate on one path and see how that goes and exactly. go from there. Exactly. Love yeah. that. So um, there's one thing that I wanted to ask you because uh, I recently did this and um, it, with every club, you got to have a, 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 uh, your your fans right like your groups and everything and something that i've seen that has been going on more and more in 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 soccer that i wish other leagues would do or other sports is your membership right you got your season members for your people that are there and then you have your out of town members which i am part of that you know are supporters of the of the club but not necessarily are able to make it to watch a game in minnesota you know tell me a little bit about about that yeah, you know, uh, you know, I talk about city being special, and, and I'm obviously biased, but it, you know, it, it really is unique and special because it, it really, truly for us is so community driven. And mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm I'm the GM, and we'll have a head coach, and Dan is the kind of the founder owner. But it, and everybody says this, but it really is the members who like you guys own this. Like, y- you tell us what to do, and so it's not just lip service and like hey, we want to try to get a couple bucks out of you. Like, no, we, this is a community club and, and we take that really seriously. So in, in community, I think that term can be, it can be pretty broad and can have different definitions of what that looks like. Obviously, if you're, you're in town, it's, it's a lot easier to get to know people and be a part of the immediate community and go get a beer. But for us, like soccer is a global game. And, yeah. and yes, our focus is very much on the Minnesota players, but this it's not limited by borders or whatever. And I think that's part of why you see like everybody gets amped up about the World Cup is because so many people are like, hey, this is just a game that we love and regardless of skin color, or, you know, where we live or whatever, like this is we just get to participate in it. And so, you know, for so for us, like when we when we talk about that, like it's it's a big thing. Like how do we make it worth it to our members how do we feel or how do we make them feel like they're a part of the community and have a say in what we're doing because you know we we could make decisions and that's great but Mm -hmm. it 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 really is important for us to hear um what what our members want to do and and i'll give you a good example so when we announced that we were going to go step into usl2 we had it like a kind of a members in town kind of get together of just, you know, the AMA, you know, ask us anything, let's talk about, you know, whatever. And 
the first question and the question that I, we kind of got over and over was, are you with the jump into USL2, are you going to continue to be focused on Minnesota players or are you going to turn into other clubs that, you know, bring in, try to just try to bring in the best level players from wherever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had talked about that internally a little bit because we want to be competitive, but we also don't want to get away from who we are. And we're like, well, let's figure that out. But as we, you know, as we sat around and we're drinking beers at Udafil's shout out to our sponsor, um, the, it was really apparent that like this meant a lot to our members that we mm -hmm. need to continue to focus on Minnesota players, certainly last year. And, and you know, even if long-term that, limits us from what we can do from a competitive standpoint and maybe we never win a national championship or the conference i don't think that matters as much because if our whole state of ethos is hey we want to be about the minnesota player making minnesota soccer better and that's what our fans want then then that's success for us because you know we've learned really quickly we've won some trophies and games it's great it's awesome but especially if you look around lower league soccer and this is probably true in in other sports as well the, the shelf life of a lot of these clubs is not long. And so real success isn't necessarily winning. It's about longevity and sustainability. And mm. for us, that's very, very much tied to we have to be a community club. We have to be a very do-it-yourself club, like, you know, not volunteer driven, but it's, you know, I, one of our, uh, Adam last year said this really well, he's like, what what makes city amazing is it's just a bunch of people doing or ordinary people doing things together which is what makes it extraordinary and and it's so true because it's not just us as a front office or coaches or whatever like our fans like i one of the coolest things that will forever stay with me with city is so we launched our futures program which was you know for our 17 and 19 year olds and trying to just bring up more players and give them opportunities but the the big thing with soccer is it's very much pay to play. Mm -hmm. So it, it you can it's very restrictive when it comes to you know who can play. And for us, we want to try to be very inclusive and again go back to that community term. And so you know our future staff, this is I think our, their third year of doing it, have done an unbelievable job recruiting and going out and finding players and building relationships in in non traditional soccer. Or, um, environments and so what has happened is you, you know we get a lot of players like the kids you'll see in club or high school we have a lot of players also who don't necessarily play soccer or are you know first generation immigrant families or, or you know just don't have the means to do that and so what was really cool is as we were launching this we're like well we can't turn into pay to play but obviously like we need money to do this yeah and you need, yeah it's kind of important, right? Yeah. So <laughs> just, a little. Um, just a little, you know, I, I love to pay for everything with, you know, a song and a high five, but that's not the real world. So, <laughs> True. Um, so some of our supporters though, when we were doing this, like their passion is homebrewing and they call themselves the hop clouds because uh, the dark clouds is a supporters group for Minnesota United. And so that's kind of their thing. And, and they came to us and said, Hey, we would love to do this. We would love to create, four different beers for you guys because we had four different futures teams that are named after different neighborhoods in here in Minneapolis and we want to sell these or like auction them off or you know if if people donate a certain amount like they get a certain number of bottles of this and nice. and they just did it because they loved it they loved they wanted to support it and I think that first year, I think they ended up raising like $1,200, which again, for a club, like doesn't sound like a ton, but for a club like us, like That's every some... penny counts. Yeah. So it was, it's, it's unbelievably cool to see those different threads kind of come together and be like, man, this is awesome. Like this, this is what community is about of like, Hey, you get to do what you love and brewing beer and we get to do what we love and coaching and we get to give some kids who don't usually have an opportunity to you know play soccer at least in the traditional standpoint like this shit is cool so yeah, those are the yeah. things that like you know again love winning love the trophies but i think to all of us those are the more important things that like really continue to motivate and drive what what we do on a day-to-day -day basis 
I, I like that, right? Like, I mean, it's all about making sure that one, you're providing a safe space for a lot of these, you know, young men and, you know, just kids, right? Like, you know, and, and, and making sure that, right, you know, you are developing the right way. And I think that's, you know, that speaks to the, the, the value of what the club is. And also, right, you know, you're creating future stars for, God knows how many years to come, right? So I mean that's you're you're investing in in the future and and I think that's very admirable. Yeah, it's it's been cool and you know, I'm I'm just lucky to be a part of it cuz we have so many creative people who like I I never would have thought of any of those things, but again, you bring enough people in with enough good ideas like there's there's some magic that can happen. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. Uh, so the, the, but the club, like, you know, so what are you guys looking forward, right? You know, into a new season? Um, obviously, you you know, you like you say, you go in recruiting and you want to make sure that you're staying within your DNA of what the club is. But I'm sure there's also there's a competition side as you guys are looking to, you know, move ahead of what you guys were from from last year. Correct. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So we, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, I've, I've kind of talked about just all these, you know, how do you make these things work? Like be competitive and shoot yourself. And, and I think the term that we always go back to is how do we be professionally amateur and mm. be who we are, which is a little bit tongue in cheek. We don't take ourselves super seriously. So there's the amateur side of that, but yeah, we want to be professional and we want to give our players a good professional um, experience. And so you know, one of the things that we're doing this year is we're bringing in a new staff and I, I, I'm really excited. We haven't announced them quite yet, but, you know, especially if you're vocal, you'll, you'll recognize the names that are here. And, and I think it'll be, I think it'll be really, really fun for a lot of people to see the staff. And they're, they're very, very good at what they do. Um, and, and I think that'll be helpful. And I think, you know, it, like we talked about last year, just with trying to do too much and and not having enough kind of resources you know we changed that this year we said you know what we're not going to do mpsl we're going to focus on usl we're going to focus on our futures and really start to be proactive and, and what does that mean to be more professional across the board and with our new coaching staff can we take like what their style is as coaching and kind of their key performance indicators and can we start to integrate that into our futures program and really do that with the staff in there. And so, you know, there's, there's always ideas of like what you would like to do, which is the ideal, but then you have to come back to, all right, so practically mm -hmm. what can we actually do? And, and I think for us, the goal this year is, you know, we'll continue to be who we are and, and do a lot of fun stuff, but yeah, we absolutely want to be more competitive and be more professional and try to give our players a more professional experience which I, I think we already do a pretty good job of but you know if you if you want to be good at what you what you are doing like you never want to be satisfied with just the status quo so yeah I think there's a lot this year where the focus has been how do we be more proactive and intentional across the board and you know I think it's I'm excited for it because it's just you know when I started back in 2018 it was me and Adam and, you know, it's, it's like we're booking hotels and we're driving vans and, you know, there's still some, you're doing everything. Day, there's stuff you, you just, you never get away. Yeah. You just, you, you wear a lot of hats and that's never, ever not going to change, you know, never going to change. But it, you know, what's been cool is like, there's been a lot of people who want to get involved. And so now it's like, Hey, like, you know, people come to me and like, you know, I'd love to do some video analysis. Like, you know, I'm not super into, you know, I'm not a coach, but, but I love watching games. Can I help you guys? And, you know, I want to do, I was talking to one guy the other day who it's funny. I found him via Twitter. He reached out to me and he's like, listen, I'm, I'm out in Colorado. He's like, I'm a big Arsenal fan, but I love what you guys are doing. He's like, and I, it's like, I just watch like Arsenal games and I, and I watch the other teams and I kind of do my own, like just for fun, like scouting event. He's like, I'd, I'd love to kind of just come in and learn. And, you know, if I can contribute and do some of the labor and help out with that, like I'd love to do it. And it's like, so even things like that, where, you know, guys are people, just not guys, but people have the opportunity to come in and do that. And it helps us. Like, I think there's a lot more that we're going to be able to do, not just this year, but for years to come as well. That's amazing. I love that. 
I love that, like, you know, people reaching out and keeping it, you know, community based, right? You know, people that are that are just reaching out to you guys. Like, I mean, I even reached out, right? Like, I'm like, listen, I want to yeah. promote this to you in my own way, right? Because sure. I, I, I want, I love the, absolutely love the logo for that you guys have, right? I think it's fun, it's different. And, you know, it's something that like, you know, when you put out that, you know, become a, uh, a member, I was like, heck yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. It. You know, so, and, and then, you know, I'm, literally as I'm talking to you right now, I'm in your online shop looking at, you know, stuff for me to get. Right? <laughs> Fantastic. No, no joke. I'm looking love, at right I now the, the jerseys, you know, the, uh, some of the things are like, you know, uh, uh, they, that I love is the scarves, right? Like, I mean, that is a very you know, soccer thing to do. And, you know, it, the one I see right now online, which is, it's a beautiful scarf. I, I got to say that, you know, it's, <laughs> it's gorgeous. And I think, uh, you know, and it's, I mean, everybody should get it. Like the fact that you, you guys, you use black and white and then you, you throw that, that kick with the pink, man, it's amazing. So kudos to you guys and, you know, being the design, you know, bringing in the design team to do that. It's amazing. Yeah. And we're in this, it's, it's really funny how these things work sometimes and you just kind of get lucky. So Dan Hudeman, who's one of our founders, he's a marketing guy, owns a marketing agency, and this is just kind of his jam. And, you know, we, we, we've, like you said, like the, the stuff that he's put together with the kits and or not the kits, but like the, the color patterns and the stars yeah. and, and just, you know, the, the, even the, uh, some of the kits that we've had done were done by a guy named Matt Wolf, who is done like, unbelievable stuff for nike like really high level stuff like world cup jerseys and stuff like that but again going back to the community theme he, he was a buddy of like our first ever captain and so when we started out aaron olsen just hit this guy was like hey man they're doing this stuff you want to make some kids he's like yeah man hell yeah so <laughs> it's 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 just crazy like how all of it kind of comes together and you know it's like hey again just find out what you're passionate about how can we put it to work and some cool stuff happens from time to time. So I love yeah, that. We're, we're pretty lucky. I love that. Um, oh, I want to ask you one more question. So that way people can know uh, how they can um, become members of, of the, uh, of the team, as far as like, you know, for someone like myself or someone, the people that live across the U S that are not able to make it, how do they become members of the, the team, right? You know, the out of town membership, as well as some of the perks that they would get as far as when they sign up. Yeah, great question. Glad you asked. You can go online, uh, and I I'm, I should know this as GM. <laughs> just Google <laughs> the Minneapolis city. It'll I'm sure it'll come up. Google's pretty good at that. Um, but just go and you can do the membership, and you can do the in town one. The out of town one I think is a little bit cheaper, but I still think you get most of the stuff. Like you get a scarf, get some buttons, some swag, stuff like that. You get a card, and obviously can come out to games. Um, but you know the big thing that comes with that is Anytime that we make big decisions, like we put it to our members as a vote. So whether you are in town, out of town, you know, we want input. And this is actually, it was really interesting when we made, when we were talking about the decision to step into the USL, we, we had a membership meeting about it. And there was, there's actually several people who don't live in the Metro Minneapolis area and live out of state. And it was, it was actually really helpful to get their input because they, I think there was a couple of people out East that said, you know, there are some clubs that have done it this way and, and here's some things you should think about. And, you know, we think you could do it, but, but also stay true who you are. And, and that's stuff we really value. And so, you know, the, the real perk is, is like, you get to be part of this community. Again, community is not defined by borders and really have some input in terms of like what what we do as a club because because that matters and you know again it's it's member driven it's we're we're just the people who do this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis but it's it's community and ergo the community gets to make the decision so you know just being a part of that is is cool and you get to support you know for us i think as i talked about our our big thing is we want to be local and minnesota has turned out some good players and I think we can continue to do so, but it's really important. And I think it's, it's a big reason why our players stay with us is that they know that for, for us, right. this isn't just about winning games. It's like, we, we want to see you guys be successful. And I, I, you know, it's, I say this every time we have an open trial or a combine. And I said it yesterday to our group, I said, listen, you know, 
I would love to take every single one of you players and have you be on our roster. We don't have that space. However, our whole thing is we want to see Minnesota soccer be better. And there's other clubs. There's St. Croix that's going to, has been doing a great job. There's a new club down in Rochester. There's joy of the people. There's twin stars. Like there's all of these other clubs that are here that, you know, maybe don't have the same profile that we have. And, you know, we're very lucky to have that, but are still doing good things. And like, Again, I've said this to players like, hey, if, if we pass on you as a player and you come up and score a game-winning goal on us, I hope you come find me and say, hey, you should have taken it because I'm still going to give you a high five and be like, awesome, man. Like, we made a mistake, but ultimately the whole goal of seeing you guys as players get better, like, if that's being served, I don't care who you play for. I hope you can play for us, but yeah. the whole point is just like, let's Minnesota soccer be better, so – yeah, so that's that's our whole thing. So anyway, back to your question about kind of the membership piece. You know, I, I, if you're supporting us, I think hopefully the goal is to support Minnesota soccer, and even beyond Minnesota soccer, but just local kind of grassroots soccer as a whole. I love it. I love it. And and for for someone like myself, you know, I I have to believe in in what the the message is and what the club is doing in order for me to you know and invest in you know into something like this right so and and from the very get-go i saw it i'm like yeah this is something that's cool that you guys are doing something cool even if i'm not there i think that's something that i can definitely you know support and i'm sure there's a lot of people out there that think the same way that i do so congratulations on that and, and you know i'm looking forward to you know seeing you guys you know this year's you know play and and be successful right you know not wins and losses, but successful, uh, you know, overall uh, with the community and, and the team overall. No, I appreciate that a lot, really. And, and it, it, I mean it when I say any support that we get is, is we, that means the world to us because it, it's, again, it's not about the dollars. It's about the people hopefully understand and believe in what we're trying to do. And that's the most yeah. encouraging thing for us is like, yeah, let's, let's continue to do this because, being authentic and you know doing stuff like that is, is really important. important absolutely all right my friend now we are at the part of the uh, of the interview but before i go into that is there anything that i didn't ask you or did you wanted to you know relate or you know give us uh, some more information on this is your time if not <laughs> i got some good hard questions for you my friend Awesome. Um, no, uh, really quick. Uh, I will just say I, I have to give a shout out to just all of our staff. I've talked about our future staff, but like city is from a front office side. Like there's so many people that don't get asked to be on podcasts, you know, from Dan or Sarah or John Bisworm, like um, our analysis and, and really like we, we cannot do this without them. And so even though they don't get to be front and center. Like I, I want to make sure that at least I acknowledge them and people know like, Hey, we have some phenomenal people behind the scenes that do amazing work and put so much time and effort into them. And so they, you know, it, and, and you know, this is like a lot of it is just you're, you're overworked and underappreciated. So I always want to make sure that <laughs> many, many has to be worn. Yeah, exactly. I want to make sure that they know they are appreciated because they certainly are. Love it. Love it. Um, and then they all have an invitation to come on the podcast. Absolutely. Got want to get to know their story. So it, more it. the merrier. So bring Take it. it happen. All right. Uh, before I, I go into this one, I have one more question for you. And this is a very serious question. Um, right. I'm, I'm in your uh, on, online shop. Um, I see that there is one dad hat there. Will you be bringing <laughs> anything else as far as dad hats out there? So because, you know, I would definitely love to uh, get some with the, with the crest on it. 100% because out of yes. all of the merch that gets requested, hats are the biggest. And, we, and we've done scarves, we've done kits. That's great. But I keep telling Dan, like, Dan, we have not tapped into the hat market. I have one that I wear all the time. Like, yeah, it's we're, we're it'll make it happen. If, if there's one thing I will do as general manager this year, it will be to get more hats into the yes. into the uh, into the market for sure. And as you can see behind me, there's, I don't have enough hats, you know, so <laughs> just a few, just, <laughs> just a, few. a few, exactly. <laughs> and I would love to add more to the collection. So, all right, Deal. here we go. So let's say that you go to a sporting game, whether it's uh soccer or even a hockey game. Okay. What is your drink and food of choice? 
Um, I'm gonna sound really lame. Uh, <laughs> at least for the drink parts, I. I love a good Miller Lite, and this is blasphemous. <laughs> this is it's even more blasphemous because my in-laws own a brewery, and if oh. they heard me say that, they would disown me. So I just have to make sure they never hear this. But <laughs> so it's probably that. Um, I'm a big I like nachos. That's an, like I'll I'll say this: if it's a standard thing, I love nachos. I'm all about that. But I actually like kind of the whole goal when you go somewhere else to a game is like, I want to try to find that novelty item. Like, give me the deep fried pickle on a stick. Like, I want to try that or you know, maybe not that, but. Listen, um, fried pickles is a, it's good. It's good. Yeah, dude. It's, it is good. So I would go, I would actually say, I don't know if I, I my standard is finding whatever is not standard. I want to find that one item because it's, if they're, if they're selling like that one off, it's probably pretty good. That's amazing. I love that. That's a great answer. Yes. Love it. And okay. That, yeah. So let's say that you find yourself on a day that you're not working or doing anything and you are bored out of your mind. What is the one thing that you would do? <laughs> I know it's very rare, right? With kids and yeah, family and I, work. Dude, dude, I, man, that is a great question because I never <laughs> have any free time. Um, no, honestly, like I, I do, I w something I don't do enough is like, I don't, just sit and watch soccer just to watch and enjoy it mm. so the world cup this year was fantastic for that like it was super entertaining and and i could kind of like you always try to kind of like turn off the coaching brain a little bit you can't always entirely but just but i will say like the the final in particular just to watch that game and see the Messi versus mbappe oh and, so you know, good dust, like that was fun. So anytime I can just kind of sit, watch a game just to watch it for enjoyment's sake, uh, that's that's my that's my little slice of heaven for sure. That final was unreal. I was watching it with my whole family, and I was jumping and screaming and crying and laughing, and it was like <laughs> every single emotion that you can think of happened, and it was amazing. It's incredible. It was, it was, and I mean, it's like singularly the most entertaining soccer game I've ever watched. Like it was unbelievable for yeah, so many back reasons. and forth. And then obviously somebody had to lose, yes. but you, you, right. Like you didn't want them to lose because it was that good. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So in your opinion, which is the most boring sport out there? Oh man. Uh, I, I am going to get some hate from all the baseball players and people out there. <laughs> Here's – here now, I will say this, and I need to clarify this because I, I really do love all sports. I'm absolutely a sports guy, but, I, you know, and I'm going to change – I'm going to I'm gonna do two. I'm just, since I'm going to piss off people, I'm going to piss off everybody. <laughs> all right, let's um, just go for the whole gusto. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'm, look, if you're not polarizing, what are you doing? <laughs> so – my I would say I'm not baseball baseball for sure because here's why 162 games is too much just anything is too much okay that's a now, good argument okay when when you get to the playoffs 100 I love it like give me all of the September October like yes I I love that like that's really fun to watch because then it kind of turns into a chess match of that stuff so I appreciate that but like the regular season <laughs> Fuck off. Um, <laughs> yes. And I will say, I will say too, part of why I, if, and, and, and I have a background in psychology. So as I kind of do some self analysis and, you know, reflection, I do think part of why I am not a baseball fan is because the freaking twins have been so bad for so long. <laughs> and I'm not going to say the name of our ownership group, but like, it's been because again, as a Minnesota fan, like I have seen Ugh. two championships. It was an 87 and 91 and I had my Homer hanky and I was all about it. And my, like, but Ed, like that was 32 years ago. Like, Dude, I'm a Cleveland I fan. So I, I get it. Yeah. You get, you do get it. You do get it. So, all right. You understand that. All right. So that's, I pissed off the baseball people. The other one similar and this is probably more true a few years ago so I'm, I'm a little bit more warmer on it now but nba basketball because yeah. 
it's just like it, my wife my wife is hilarious and there was one time we were watching sports center and in like eight out of the 10 things on sports center were dunk. she's like i don't i don't get it like yeah you're yeah, six yeah, yeah. six and you have a five foot vertical and you put that like you should be able to do that that's not impressive <laughs> and like I, you know again i'm just trying to piss people off at this point but it's so there's something to that and like you know it, it's sort of like the baseball thing like it's just regular seeing a zoom is not as meaningful and like back when it was just like the same four teams in the conference finals i was like man i don't care about this and, and again yeah. i and again but but again psychoanalytically i do think some of that is tied because the wolves have been so bad <laughs> that was just going to say, the, the different wolves have been really bad especially this year when you trade for rudy gobert and you're like hey we've got cat we've got gobert we've got anthony you know, Carl Towns and Ant, like, we're good. And now we're, like, three games below 500. I'm like, God dang it. What so, is going on? Right. I'm with you. It's unbelievable. I'm so, with you there I, because. I think it's more, it's more about me than it is the actual, I'm being <laughs> the actual really sport. Honest. I have a lot of feelings pent up in the last 35 years as a well, Minnesota see, sports fan. When 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 LeBron was here for where, with Cleveland, they were good. When he left, they were yeah. really really bad. So yeah. and and you're like you're like, is this even worth watching? And then right. you know, now they're good. So like I mean, I'm I'm uh, right now. I'm happy that, that my team is good. So I'm I'm okay with that. But yeah, I'm with you 100 percent there. Like it's just like one of those things. It's just like, why am I watching this? Why am I putting myself through just? sit here watching this horrible team. I yes. might as well watch something else. Right. Right. There's lots of great shows on Netflix. A I could absolutely. go spend time watching there. Right? 100%. So, You're right. Yes. <laughs> I just finished, yes. you know, uh, we just finally finished uh, uh, Stranger Things because there was nothing there else on TV. Go. So boom. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. You're making good life choices. Adam. I am making good life choices. <laughs> sleep, not so much, but good life choices. Hey, um, hey, that's fine. Sleep, you can sleep in your dad. That's all. There good. you go. Exactly. All right. So, what was your first job ever? What was my first job ever? Um, probably being a soccer ref, but I would say in my first real job and i i use real loosely <laughs> uh was uh being a, a camp a day camp counselor at Ooh. the ymca and nice. you know i that was probably i i'm dating myself probably 15 years ago and it was just it was kind of absurd like the fact that like what we got paid to do so like there's one of my one of my really good buddies here. Uh, he's he's a radio guy. He's on the radio, but we worked together at the at the Y, and for a summer. And we worked with like the middle schoolers, and we would get paid to like take them on a field trip every day to like a Twins game or a water park. Oh, and I remember really the, horrible. Vividly one. Yeah, I know. Right. Like <laughs> this is this is really bad. But we're like we're what we're we're sitting at this water park, and he and I. And there's like. But like you know, there's only four of us, and there's like 40 kids running a month for <laughs> water park. We're sitting there on the lazy river, like we watch the kids. No, <laughs> so no, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, we're good. This is fine. We're so, good. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, there, there, nobody, nobody died. You know, no, we're all right. We're good. Lawsuits, <laughs> right? So like that was again real job, quote unquote. But I went to baseball games and sat with my buddy in the lazy river. So you know. Nice. Uh, Love it. it That's amazing. It All right. A couple awesome. more here and then I'll let you go, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is great. All right. Uh, have you ever regifted a gift? Uh, my family, we do this like big white elephant thing. Yeah. Call it yep, jokes. Yep. And everybody comes with like five presents and whatever. And I, I kid you not, like, there's some, there's some like practical things like we'll take every year, but every single year, 80% of the stuff that we get, we put in a box downstairs and then we just put it back in for next year. So, <laughs> it's going right back into the green. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not spending money on this. Like here, you can have your tape measure back, whatever. You can so, have it back. <laughs> exactly. Like, come on. Oh, that's good. So, I like it. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. What was your favorite cereal growing up as a kid? Um, a lot of them. My dad actually worked at General Mills. Ooh. 
Yeah, so we we were like the shit when it came to sleepovers because all, all the cereal is, in the world. All, we had all the cereal in the world. And so, you know, tricks, oh. cinnamon toast, crunch, um, you know, all the different Cheerios. I would say, though, for me, it was cinnamon toast crunch. That nice. is nice. That's up there. My sure. daughter, my daughter loves cinnamon toast crunch right now. So that's Let's her, go. she that's her jam right now. You know, this month, well, I don't know what's going to be next month, but right now it's cinnamon toast crunch. So <laughs> right, yeah, she right. changes her mind every year, every month. So we're good. Um, okay, yeah. and last one. If you could be in any movie, any movie, what movie would it be? Mighty Ducks. Like nice. Mighty Ducks. Yes. Because it was like it, I, I can't you what it was like to watch a hockey movie with kids in minnesota at that time like because that like that was me like I, all of the places that they played like you, you'd go out to uh parade stadium out there and like like i grew up playing at, at minnetonka and that's actually where they, they did a lot of the stuff so like it was it, there was something cool about just oh. the hockey movie but like it, like this is my life so I would say Mighty Ducks just because that was basically what I lived minus having Gordon Bombay in my life. Right, exactly. Man, I love that movie. Such a good movie. I used to have the jersey and everything. Oh, oh grew up, And then when I started really liking hockey, I was you know a fan of the Mighty Ducks. That was good. Yes, I am 100% there. I love that. That's a great answer, my friend. Phenomenal. Uh, love it. Matt, Thank you so much for doing this. I had an absolute blast. Um, where can people find you and the team on the socials? Uh, yeah, so the team, I think, is at Minneapolis City SC. It's on Twitter again. And Twitter I will put all that info. Don't worry. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Um, if you want to follow me, I'm kind of a Twitter guy. I'm going to be really honest. It's It's a lot of nonsense. So if you're looking for like really hot soccer takes, don't follow me. If you want like (laughs) snarky, stupid, like whatever. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think I'm like at M Scoten or something like that. But yeah, and I I perfect. And I I we all we all know Twitter, it's a love hate, but you know, the people that you find and interact with, it's a lot of fun. So I like interacting with people. So Feel free to follow. We'll follow you back and we'll have some fun. Love it. Love it. My thing again. And then I'll make sure to put everything in here and guys, make sure you guys go and sign up for the membership. Even if you're out of town, it is a great uh, club to uh, support. So, and uh, again, thank you, Matt. No, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And uh, it's always, again, really encouraging to know that people actually care about what we do and think we're doing an all right job. So I really appreciate the time. And, uh, yeah, man, let's uh, let's do it again sometime. Yes, sir. We'll do. All right. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoy that episode with Matt. Now, make sure you guys are following him and the team. OK, make sure you guys are going into the team shop and get that membership. OK, if you're out of town like myself, there is a lower price for that. But then you get your cool gear, man. And then you get to support some local uh, soccer up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. OK, now. Also, make sure you guys are subscribed to the podcast. Give it five stars. The The, the reason I, I always say this every week is because by doing this, I go up on the rankings and then that way more people get to know about the podcast. OK, so thank you for that. From the bottom of my heart, I greatly appreciate that. But you guys are here until the end of the episode, just so you guys can hear, of course, the dad joke of the episode. And here it is. What lights up a soccer stadium? A soccer match. All right, all right, I'll see myself out. And then until then, guys, keep on grinding and always support the minor leagues. See ya. This podcast is part of the Curved Brim Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brim Media. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. 
I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean, and I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna Tommaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series. And in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. This is Patrick. And Corey. Oh, BaseballMapper.com. And we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball. So get on the site and find a team near you today. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at curvebrimmedia.com. <laughs>